Hi everybody, it's Michelle and I'm here at the Ginger Creek Garden. Today is Sunday the 28th of June and our garden is one month old today. It feels so alive out here today being exactly one month old and after we just got like two inches of rain. Oh my gosh, this garden had only seen about three quarters of an inch of rain since we planted it on the 30th of May. So within the last 24 hours, we got some decent measurable rain. I'm gonna go take a look at the gauge right now. It was pretty close. Got about an inch and a half here. Um, at my house across town, we got two inches of rain. So this gauge shows us we got an inch and a half. I'm so grateful for that. So thank you, Lord. Bring on more. I wanted to do a quick garden tour, being that the garden is one month old today. And um, knowing that we're going to get to come to church next week for our first live service at church next week. So... I just wanted to walk through the garden really quick and share with everybody the progress of what everything is doing. Um, something that I did notice, and this may be something that we look at moving into the future. Um, all of the tomato plants behind me were seed started in my home. And um, I also sold a ton of these plants to people as well as gave them to some of my friends. So I was at my girlfriend Laura's today, who she had the same kind of varieties that I have here in the garden, and I went to her house today, where she had established garden beds at her house, and um, amended soil that had been built throughout the years. Um, and her plants are up to my hip, and they are thick stalked, dark green leaves, and look beautiful. Um, they're the same exact plants that are in our garden here, and our plants don't look like that. And this just goes to show you the difference in the soil and the amended soils that we put our plants in. This is something that a lot of people struggle with and don't even realize that it's happening. This year when we started this garden, um, this was all grass, so we actually got a sodder. We sod cutted all of the grass out of here got rid of that then I had some friends come in and they tilled it so they broke up all of the dirt then we laid a layer of um, halfway broken down horse manure and then some topsoil and then we um, tilled it again and <clears throat> then we started planting in it we did put in the holes of all of our plants um, some really good garden soil with some fertilizer to kind of give it a boost. I did just recently purchase a, a tester for the soil, a soil tester to see what kind of um, minerals are in the soil so we can amend it the properly. But I do know that when soil is trying to break down manure, it pulls nitrogen out of the soil, which makes the plants struggle for nitrogen. So I do think that we're going to have to feed our plants some nitrogen, which is not a problem. I do have that at my house. But to see comparatively the plants that are at Laura's house versus the plants that are here in the garden and how they're dramatically different, knowing that this soil obviously is virgin soil. We just started it this year. And the soil at Laura's house is in an established raised garden bed that she's had for years at her house. It, it makes a huge difference. So moving forward into next year, I know that this soil is going to even be better because we're going to amend it and work with it throughout the year and we'll have better soil next year. So our plants are slow to start and our plants are not as thick and beautiful and green as the plants over at Laura's, but they will still produce fruit. So as the video started today, I shared with you the beautiful zinnia that we have right there. That makes me so happy because this is the first time I've ever grown zinnias and this is from the seeds that I started and I never knew how beautiful they were in person, especially after you grow them individually. 
We also planted a bunch of marigolds between all of our tomatoes because they do ward off pests. So we put um, marigold here, marigold there, marigold there, some marigolds over here, um, just to ward off the pests, which are nice. And then we put zinnias near every post stake. So like this post stake, that one there, that one there, there's zinnias down at the bottom um, to just bring some beautiful color to the garden. There's more marigolds right there. Starting at this end of our garden, we have more zinnias here. Zucchinis, these were seed started. We put seeds in the ground for these um, little zucchini guys. We did seed start a bunch of zucchinis right at the beginning actually before the 30th of May, and they did not germinate. But that's our fault because we didn't come out here and keep them wet. If you don't keep seeds in the ground wet, they're never gonna germinate, and that's kind of a hard lesson we learned. But we went ahead and popped them in the ground anyway, and that's a byproduct of what that looks like. Um, this, we had some extra okra planted in the other side, so I moved it over here and now we have a zucchini popping up right next to it so when these get a little bit more established i'll go ahead and i'll separate them this again is a zucchini actually two of them so all the seeds germinated in this little spot and we will take these out we'll move them around the garden so that they can produce for us these are all the black beauty Zucchinis. This is the typical zucchini that you're going to find in the grocery store. Um, there's three plants in here. Obviously, all three seeds germinated in here. And you're going to notice this too when you grow your zucchini. See these round leaves that come out first? This happens on a cucumber and on a zucchini. This is the, this is the leaf that comes out of the shell. So as soon as that shell pops open, you're going to have this round leaf here. And then it will establish these typical shaped zucchini leaves and cucumber leaves like this. Almost looks like a little maple leaf. But these down here, these I call them the radar leaves. So they pop out of the shell. And then it's like they put their arms out like, sun, come to me. Feed me, sun. They're like the radar arms. They're like, they stick out like this and they say, bring me sun. Cause then the sun comes in from those leaves and then produces the normal leaves that come on the plant. So I think that that's pretty cool how God has created these plants that way. More zucchini, black beauty zucchini, more black zucchini. This tape don't need to be there. Oh, there's a couple in there. There's two plants there. So we can divide that up also. I did go to the store and buy some store-bought zucchini um, because when I did not see that our plants were germinating, I panicked, which is crazy because I, I leave it all up to God, and that day I didn't. <laughs> I panicked, so I went to Home Depot and bought some seeds, or bought some plants, and I went through every single one of the cups that they were selling for $3.78 a cup. And I found a plant that was um, had two or three plants in each cup. And the reason I do that is because why would I pay $3.78 a cup for one plant when I can find one with four or five plants in it? And that's what I did. So I got like 12 plants for the price of three. And I'm so happy about that. And I did, I brought them here and I planted them. This is one of them. This is a perfect example. This was already started. This is a yellow squash, so the leaf is a little different. But you see right down here, there's another seedling right here. I put these as seeds in there. And there's another one right over there. So this again is three plants that we'll be able to separate out and put somewhere else in the garden. Here's another good plant. The little flower died off there. He's getting a little flower pot right here. There's another seed start right here. These are more zinnias for color, more zinnias, yellow squash, the random eggplant. We had an extra and we had an extra hole, so I just threw them in there. I wouldn't be surprised if a zucchini or a yellow squash pops up in there. Look how big this one is. This one's huge with a little baby down here. There's another one. 
with a baby down here and another and a baby there. On to our cucumbers. Oh, look at this guy. He's wanting to grow up. We got to get him wrapped around something. Um, cucumbers. These things have been so teeny tiny since we started them. And now they're starting to pop off, which is fantastic. I love it. We put this um, net here. This is um, mesh netting that can take the plant up. And we have tons of little buds in there. Hopefully they're male and female flowers. Got to come out here and do a little bit of weeding. But look at all these wonderful cucumbers. There's a couple different varieties in here. Um, let's take a look. Market more cucumbers. Oh, look at all of those. I'm not sure if everybody knows the difference in a male and a female flower. This right here that has stem, then the stem connection here, and then this bubble here, that's the fruit. That's the cucumber. And then the flower. So this one here, that's a female. This is a female. <laughs> that's just a female party going on on this plant. Tons of female flowers. So hopefully they will grow up to be very big cucumbers for us. The weeds are driving me crazy. Over here, that's still a market more. These are called Space Masters. That's a cute little female flower. You can tell it's a female because it has the fruit right underneath the flower. If it does not have the fruit underneath the flower, then that is a male flower. Moving on down, I'm noticing that my plant markers don't work so good with the Sharpie. This is a muncher cucumber. Um, I don't see any female flowers on there. Only males. Only males. Looks like we lost something over here. Big empty space. These are munchers. Then Boston pickling. Boston pickling cucumbers. These pickles will be smaller in size, which is great. The reason I like growing on a trellis like this is because if the leaves will always face the sun, which is that way, if we have to spray them for pest damage or um, any kind of prevention spray, we can spray it on this side. And then you can come around to this side and spray underneath and get underneath the leaves really, really easily. That's the reason I like to trellis them like that. We are also growing okra. We have Clemson spineless, Clemson spineless, red burgundy, star of David, star of David, star of David, star of David, and star of David. There's a couple different ones in each cup, which is fine. We can take them out and plant them somewhere else. We have plenty of space like right here we can put them in. Those are all zinnias. Um, those are going to be pretty big. I can't wait to see those. Then on to the green bean patch. These were struggling. Something awful. Um, they're finally flowering, which makes my heart very happy. Um, they were all pretty light green like this. And now they're starting to really green up like this and get the beautiful green bean flower on them. These are all a bush variety green bean, which means that they're only going to get about this tall, so only about a foot tall. They do not need trellis support, and um, you can pick off these uh, throughout the summer as long as they um, continue to flower. Then we did a couple different varieties. This is your Blue Lake variety. We did like a yellow wax bean over here, just to kind of see the difference. See a little bit of weeds over there? Um, that comes out of the straw. The straw is not seedless. So 